Is minimalism the answer to your prayers? Probably. Some people think minimalism is just a fancy way of saying stoicism, while some think it's just a trendy decorating aesthetic, while even others think that it's a smart way to save money without seeming cheap. And you know what? They're all right. Minimalism is the practice of getting rid of the clutter in your physical and mental space to make room for the things that truly matter to you. A calm and beautiful space that lets you focus, produce, unwind, and grow. While there are many factors that go into minimalism, I've boiled them down to the five basic factors that you can start using today. Utility, quality, intentionality, space, and gratitude. Some of you won't like what I have to say, but you'll thank me later. Let's start with utility. Think of it like this. Everything in your life should have a job to accomplish. So before you can decide what stays and what goes, you first have to determine its purpose. For example, in design, that would mean identifying the purpose of a particular room, which changes drastically depending on where you are. By breaking your home down room by room, you're able to clearly decide what belongs there and what doesn't. The same thing can be said about other things in your life. For example, what is the purpose of going to the gym? Is it to recover from an injury, to increase your muscle mass, to increase your stamina, or to socialize? Once you've clearly identified the purpose, your next steps become obvious. If you're there for stamina, then focus on cardio. If you're there to socialize, then focus on your outfit. What's the purpose of your current job? Is it to make money, to find fulfillment, to gain self-esteem, or is it a stepping stone to something else? What's the purpose of the people in your life? Everyone has a different role to play, and defining what that role is helps you determine what you expect from the relationship and whether your expectations are being fulfilled or not. Once you define the utility, the purpose of a person, place, or a thing, you're ready for the next step. Minimalism focuses on quality over quantity. If it's not beautiful, durable, or fulfilling its purpose, get rid of it. If it doesn't bring you peace, joy, fulfillment, or inspiration, get rid of it. Less junk means more time, money, and space for the best life has to offer. And this applies to everything, people, places, and things. For example, a minimalist prefers to have one high quality, dependable car rather than 10 clunkers. They prefer to have a few trusted and true friends and to have a large social circle of people who bring no value to their lives. They'd rather be alone than in bad company. We'd all love to have an abundance of quality relationships, possessions, and experiences, but the way to acquire that is by getting rid of anything that lacks value and is just taking up space. Which brings us to the next step. To strengthen a plant, you have to prune it. Once you understand the utility of a person, place, or a thing, and embrace the concept of quality over quantity, you're ready to practice intentionality in your life. Intentionality is a state of mind where you actively choose what belongs in your space and what doesn't, what you want to commit your time to, and what you don't. You curate your life deliberately. If something doesn't look or feel right anymore, if it doesn't work anymore, it's rejected and replaced. This includes your home, your relationships, and even the type of thoughts that you entertain in your mind. For example, let's say you've always had a fear of flying, a quirk that you've made part of your identity. Once you determine that flying is indeed useful and a higher quality way to travel, you intentionally choose to get rid of any thoughts that get in your way. They don't add anything valuable and they're no longer useful. You change your identity from a person who has a fear of flying to a person who actually enjoys it because this thought is more useful to you and produces higher quality experiences. Same thing goes for decorating your living room. Let's say you've determined that the purpose of the room is relaxation and social gathering. The color of the walls, the smells, the lighting, and even the textures of your furniture. Everything supports the room's purpose in an elegant way. Even the furniture is placed to induce relaxation and make it easy for guests to gather so you don't clutter the room with extras. Which leads us to the next step. Space is crucial for productivity, focus, introspection, and growth. 
You simplify your home and your life by intentionally getting rid of the extra stuff that isn't necessary, that's no longer useful, or that hasn't been used in a while. That home treadmill that's collecting dust gets donated or sold. You stop going to the weekly book club meetings that you no longer enjoy. Whatever you choose to keep is organized and well-maintained so that it's easy to access when you need it without taking up space when you don't. Mental space is crucial for growth. Time to check in with yourself, to unwind, to strategize. All of these are necessary and allow you to clearly determine your needs, your goals, and your next steps. Don't get me wrong. We all need entertaining distractions like social events, social media, and TV once in a while. But too much of these hinder your clarity, so you keep them to a minimum. Less distractions nurture more meaningful connections with others and with yourself. Which brings us to the next step. It's difficult to appreciate what you already have when you bombard your senses with everything new and shiny. How many pairs of shoes do you really need? How many hammers? How many cars? How many startups? What's their purpose? Are they still useful? How much physical and mental space are they taking up? Keeping things for sentimental value or just in case is a slippery slope that can end up taking over your life. And it tends to happen when a person is living in the past. For example, there are parents who keep everything their children have ever made, unwilling to let go of that special time in their lives. But people aren't things, and getting rid of a thing isn't the same as getting rid of a person. Of course, it's okay to keep some special mementos, but not at the expense of enjoying your life today. The truth is that both the past and the future live in our imaginations. Neither exist as absolute. It's always just now. Now is all any of us have, but trust me, it's enough. There is so much beauty and peace here for you if you just let yourself be present enough to appreciate it. Gratitude for the present, for who, what, and where you are today, for the people in your life now, for the blessings of this moment, help you release your grip on a past that no longer exists and frees you to live fully now. And that's the goal of minimalism in a nutshell. Minimize the fluff, maximize your life. So, are you ready to give minimalism a shot? Start with your home. Click on the link in the description box below or in my bio for a room-by-room -room how-to blueprint. As always, share your thoughts and share this vid with a friend who needs to hear it. Love you guys, hope this helps.